An amazing good morning to you. This is Ben Atkinson here, author and director of HolyClubs.com. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all of you that are writing in and telling me how much this is transforming your life. I'm so thankful for this, but I want to encourage you to keep going. I want to encourage you to share this with your friends, and I want you to begin to think about imparting this to the next generation. Find out how you can do this. You want to go forth and make disciples in all the world. Some of the nations, too. I want to encourage you. Some of the One of the groups said, we're going to actually take this and put this in another language, and we're going to use it as our missions opportunity. Go forth and make disciples in all the world as a witness. And then the end will come. Jesus' own words, not mine. Today we're going to learn to express your sincere love for Jesus. Again, we're going to teach you how to express your sincere love for Jesus. And we're going to do this, remember, in the midst of her trying to grow forth of her fear and hesitation. She's rising up. She's saying yes and going after the Lord. Why do we want to do this? First of all, it's very, very important to go through the the bible line by line as you do you grow in love for god and in the same way you're going to become fruitful you're going to be more uh you're going to be more set and in a firmer foundation to disciple those that god has placed around you you're going to be a good witness of salt and light of those around you secondly i had a dream where i watched college and university students preparing for the day as they were they were watching these videos they were group texting back and forth they were talking about the song of songs they were growing their hearts in love they were getting healed of anxiety loneliness fear depression different things that were t- touching them mentally and physically. They were being healed. They were growing their communities in love. They were becoming salt and light that blessed those around them. And also, Jesus said, before his second coming in Matthew 24, verse 12, lawlessness will abound and the love of many will grow cold. And so we don't want to wait for that to happen. We want to grow in the love of God. Why is it so important? Not just for your own self, but because look in verse 14, John, Matthew chapter 24, verse 14, the gospel will be preached in all the world as a witness, and then the end will come. Jesus said that those who's going to be preaching the gospel, those whose love hasn't grown cold. If your love goes cold, you'll be about self-preservation. If your love is hot and fiery, you're going to be on the front line sharing the gospel. Okay, let's pray and go straight into this. Father, thank you for your amazing love. Thank you for your sincere, amazing love. Pour out your spirit today as we go through this line by line. Let us grow in love with you in Jesus' name. Again, the goal is to express your sincere love for Jesus. Let's look at this. This is Song of Songs, chapter 2, verse 16. And my beloved is mine, and I am his. He feeds his flock among the lilies. So first of all, she says this phrase. She says, my beloved. And so what is she saying by this? She's, she's, what's happening here is she's growing her spiritual identity. She's setting her spiritual identity as one that's being loved. Remember, we want to be our identity to be, I am, I am loved by God, therefore I am successful. We don't want to think that we are a, a sinner desperately trying to love God. We're love, we love God and we may struggle with an area of sin. We want to make sure our identity is rooted in grounded in love. Why? Because God's identity for us is rooted and grounded in love. So we want to line up with his will, his way. So right now she's saying, my beloved. She states her identity. She is a lover of God. She's setting the first commandment first place. She's setting things in order in her life. And she's saying, I I, I want to follow after him. And he Remember, he wants to see her face. He wants to hear her voice. He wants to go deeper with her on this journey. And then she says this. She says, I am his. And and she says, my beloved is mine. And then she says, I am his. And what she's saying within that is she sees Jesus as her beloved or the one that she loves. She declares, I'm his. Jesus' ownership over her heart. This is, he has my heart. 
I mean, she, she knows that, this, that he is a good steward of her heart. It belongs to him. Her love for God is expressed in the midst of her stumbling, in the midst of her weakness. She's still declaring it. She's still opening her mouth. This is the thing. We've got to get to this place where we're identifying that my beloved is mine and I am his. That she's rooted in, I know that he loves me and I'm for him. And he loves me, and I love him, and she's declaring this. You've got to open your mouth. You've got to say this. In fact, what I do is I say, my beloved is mine. Oh, I know that you love me, and I am his. I love you back so much. I'm, I just affirm myself. I affirm who, my, who my, my identity is. I am loved by God, therefore I am successful. My beloved is mine. God loves me. I'm a lover of God. I am his. He's a good steward of my heart. I know you're mine and I'm yours. I'm not drawing back. She's growing in maturity. And she says this, he feeds his flock. Remember, she's asked several times. You know, she asked in Song of Songs chapter 1, uh, verse 7. She said, where do you feed your flocks? She, <clears throat> 12 uh, chapter 1, verse 12, chapter 2, verse 4 through 5. Now Jesus wants to feed her in a costly place. He wants to take her to a deep, deeper place. Remember, he's trying to take her away. And she goes, he feeds his flock among the lilies. She, un the, she understands that he has a place that he's going to take her and feed her. But before we go, here's what's happening. She's realizing what she needs to do to change. She understands it. I'm, I ask this question. I always jump in and say, what about tomorrow? Because this is where you make the promise to change. This is where you make the New Year's resolution. You know what you have to do to get to the next season. Right here, she's like, I know what I need to do. My question to you is, you, how many times have you been there before where you kind of started that off and you didn't make it? I'm asking you today, how is this going to be different? The difference is she's worshiping. You've got to worship and your identity has to be in love. It's got to be rooted and grounded in love. Even when you don't feel like it, I just say, oh, my beloved is mine and I am his. I'm, I'm setting my heart in that place of love. I'm opening my mouth and worshiping him. And that's what's going to get me through. That's what's going to give me the grace to carry through this. I, he does his part. I've got to do my part. I've got to lift up my voice. I've got to ask. I've got to go after the Lord in this. One of the things I say is I ask God for help. The next thing is I ask others for help. And then I act in obedience. But I want to start that all off in worship. And then the lilies. What do the lilies speak of again? It's that place of purity. It's that place where she's pure and beautiful but it's also this place where she understands that th it's costly this is where she's saying you know what I've got to go to this costly place and she says he feeds his flock among the lilies and she understands that it's not just her but it's other people and she understands that it's the corporate people who, of God who love Jesus as she does. And she knows she's got to run with good people, with godly people. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33 through 34 says this, Don't be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. Awake to righteousness. Do not sin. For some, it's speaking about those in the congregation, do not have the knowledge of God. So it's important for her to know that he's calling her to this costly place to run with the body of Christ. And she understands this. She's saying yes to this. So today, who do you run with? This is the question I want to ask you. We, we want to know this. You've got to worship. And, and I, I, I've taught you how to do that. You've got to worship. Secondly, I want to ask here, practically, who do you set around you? First of all, you've got to set, I call it an older, wiser. 
you've got to have someone that's older and wiser that you talk to on a near near weekly basis second someone that's you know your same age spiritually someone that's near you in in age um, or even younger So if you have someone your same age or you have someone younger, it's going to force you both to go deep into God together. And that's important. And then lastly, someone outside of your immediate group that you're in. Now, this is not someone that you want to speak ne you know, negatively about the other people. But I always find that it's important to get someone outside of my sphere of influence that can give me a biased opinion that might not be affected by politics within my own group that I'm with and I can get a wider broader understanding but I want to surround myself with older wiser some of my own age or maybe a little younger and then someone outside actually I do this weekly I have people that speak into my life as if I and I speak into their life so practicals we're taking away we want to express our love for Jesus even in our weak state we want to declare who he is who does this show us about who he is? First of all, it shows us that he cares so much about us. He, we need to be rooted and grounded that he is the beloved. He is one who is absolutely above in his love. It's amazing. It's, it's greater than. And he's calling us deeper into love. And he's someone that, that we can worship. We can speak freely with. It's absolutely amazing. So in, he cares so much about us. He's taking us to feed in this different place. He wants us to be surrounded by those who are like-minded and running hard after him. He cares about our heart. Out Today I want to pray for the universe or the for Buffalo State College, and uh, I, I want to pray for the Lord to move mightily there. We're going to worship up. We're going to tell Him who He is. We're going to pray in, and we're going to pray out. So, Father, I just declare that You are the one. You are the beloved. You are the one. You are mine. You care so much about me, and I am Yours. I declare. I am devoting myself to you. You are the one who touches my heart with your magnificent love. You, you're the one who feeds your flock among the lilies. You're the one who takes us deeper as a body into this costly place of love. You're the one who calls us away. You're the one who's a good father. You're the one, Jesus, with your saving grace. You're the one, Holy Spirit, who cares so much about my heart and searches the deep things of the Father. And I pray right now for Buffalo State College. In Jesus' name, send a spirit of revival there. In Jesus' name, bless the campus ministries. In Jesus' name, pour out your spirit on the churches in that area. I ask in Jesus' name, release a tidal wave of revival. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let's go after this, do these practical things, and share with your friends. God bless.